folks, as you're coming in, um, if you want to participate in a little entry activity, um, there it is. When you hear the phrase love of learning, what's another word that comes to mind? And you can answer, add your answer to the chat. Um, while you're, while we're doing that, uh, I just want to welcome you to our open house event. Uh, thank you for setting some time aside to, uh, be with us, uh, get in school is celebrating 50 years as a learning community, um, which we're really excited about, um, always committed to supporting children in their own understanding of themselves as learners and, and really helping kids build positive learning identities across the years. Um, we want children to experience a love of learning in all that they do at Giddens. Um, this is uh, really central to us and so important to uh, the work we're engaged in. This, this event, um, for you to know, is really just an opportunity for us to share with you through small moments of teaching and learning um, the ways in which our mission and values in the everyday experiences of teaching and learning show up um, for all of us, but most importantly, uh, for our, our students. And uh, dispersed throughout this uh, open house event, we'll have videos of our kids who we love dearly and are so proud of. Um, so I, we hope that you'll enjoy those as well. Um, I am joined uh, today by Elizabeth, our assistant head of school for curriculum and, and, and instruction. And she'll introduce herself uh, in a little bit. Um, I'm also enjoyed, uh, joined, getting ahead of myself, too much coffee this morning. I'm also joined by Steve, who is our preschool teacher, Diane, who is our director of auxiliary programs, uh, Sarah, who is a parent of a current preschooler, Samara, who is one of our pre-K teachers, China, who is a parent of a current pre-K pre student, Tracy, one of our um, uh, pre-K teachers, and last but not least, I want to uh, give a moment to welcome uh, Sue Mall, who is our interim head of school. And I know that, uh, Sue, if you would, uh, just uh, sort of uh, also welcome folks and... and Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to pass it off to you. Sounds good. So yes, let me add my welcome to all of you coming to the open house to learn more about Giddens. Uh, I am the interim head of school. Our head of school, Morva uh, McDonald, is uh, someone that I have known uh, throughout her tenure here at Giddens. And Morva is going to work for the National Association of Independent Schools, uh, supporting heads across the country. So we're thrilled for Morva. And uh, I am thrilled to be joining this crew as the interim head of school. I have known Giddens uh, for a long time, most recently uh, during my tenure at the Northwest School, uh, where I was a teacher and the middle school director and the recipient of Giddens graduates. So um, welcome. And I am excited for all of you to interact with the other folks on this call uh, so that you can get uh, a wonderful impression of the wonderful things happening at Giddens and all of our programs. Thank you, Sue. I, I was just trying to pull up the chat to see some of the, the, the words people put in. I'm having trouble doing so if somebody wants to read some of the the thoughts that, that come to mind with love of learning. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, sure. Exploration, engagement, curiosity, joy, smiling while learning. That was mine. Uh, <laughs> adventure, <laughs> excitement, uh, feeling of learning together, and uh, appetite. Sarah, <laughs> that was yours. <laughs> love it. Love that. Uh, all of those, all of those experiences we very much want um, our kids to have in uh, in their everyday experiences in this learning community. So again, so delighted you're here. I'm gonna uh, pass this off to Elizabeth now who will do a introduction of our early childhood program. 
Good morning, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Hudson. I am an assistant head of school for curriculum and instruction. And like Sue, I am new to the school. I started in July. I'm from Seattle and have had a combination of teaching and leading in Seattle and also overseas for quite a long time. And I am very happy to be at Giddens. I'm going to talk a little bit about the focus of our early childhood program. In our early childhood program, we focus on developing the whole child. And we have three pillars of education, which are academic and social emotional development, and also a social justice lens. So students are developing these three areas and in de developmentally appropriate areas, ways. Our program is play-based. So children are learning to construct their own meaning and to discover, discover a sense of purpose through playful problem solving. Our children in the ECE explore, observe, question, discover, ask questions and go deep into their own problem solving. Our young learners are working on how to be in community with each other and in community in looking at the school as a whole. So they participate in having a buddy, an older buddy, they have, they participate in our whole school assembly. So they see what the community is as a whole. Um, our young learners begin to learn powerful collaboration skills that are a foundation for their future learning. So collaborating with their peers and also collaborating with their teachers. Our children engage in units of study that help them develop a deep conceptual understand, understanding and also develop skills that help them to understand the world around them. And all of this works to provide a foundation for future learning and opportunities to develop and express a love and joy of learning, which we just um, engaged in thinking about what that is. So with that, I am going to pass it back to Ken. Thanks, Elizabeth. Here's a little, a little video for you. What do you love about school? Um, I'm doing nook training. I love this I like nook. the pictures on the wall. I like the pictures on the wall. So cute. So cute. Steve. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Steve Taylor, and I teach in the preschool. And I want to just uh, share a, a story with you. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I've been teaching for quite some time, and I sort of look at the school year as the seasons of the school year. And um, throughout the year, there are different um, events or happenings that sort of mark time as we go. And one of the things that I've come to um, both realize and, all, and appreciate is that we really do have just a short amount of time together. It's 10 months with your class, and generally they move to the next class. And so making the most of that time um, is just, it, uh, through the seasons, just feels like, um, brings me a lot of joy. Um, and during COVID, um, there were some events on the calendar that um, either uh, were adapted in a different way or um, weren't able to happen. And um, we have two events that are my favorite events. And one of them is the Arts Festival, and that happens in the spring. And then another one is called Generations Day. And uh, we've just had our Generations Day this fall. And um, Generations Day is a day when the students are invited to bring, the families are invited to bring a visitor uh, to the school to be with their, the child who's, who's in their life. And the school welcomes many visitors. And um, so as the teacher of the preschoolers, I wanna really prep them for the event. And part of that is getting the list of um, who's visiting in our class and how many are visiting. And, getting a sense for the logistics around 
how many chairs to bring in and things like this. Um, but I begin to talk to the students and see, as I see the list, I can see that there are uh, some students who have um, numerous visitors, two or three, other students who have, uh, who don't have a visitor. And so I begin to talk to those students who, who are not going to have a visitor and, and let them know how it's going to feel when there are um, a large group of people coming to our classroom. And um, I, I love the event so much and I just want it to go well. So I just, I really want to prepare the students um, for how it might feel for them. Um, and so um, part of that was then looking at the students who did have multiple visitors and starting to um, approach, I approached one of the students and, and said, you have three people coming. Could, you, could one of the visitors that's coming to see you um, work with uh, and one, one of your classmates who will not have a visitor that day? And as I'm asking one of the students, um, a couple of other students just kind of jump in and say, oh, uh, so-and-so can work with my grandfather and oh, I, they can be with, with my visitor. And I was able to just sort of relax. And um, though I wanna have my ducks in a row, I realized that it, the event was, was going to go smoothly and that the kids were ready, to, ready for, um, this kind of big day at our school. Um, it's also interesting that they, so when the visitors arrived, um, um, well, when we went to our classroom, I should say, um, we got to engage in an activity that's one of my favorite activities, which is writing stories. So with all those grownups in the classroom, there were plenty of people to work one-on-one -on -one with each student to write a story that the student write, tells the story and the adult, uh, writes it in dictation. Um, but beyond that, um, we had a big assembly with um, in the gym and each grade level did a performance and our students got up there and um, they performed uh, Peace Like a River. And this was in, in front of a, a, a pretty large crowd, certainly more than 200 people, um, including all, the, all of the student body. And these are the moments that really with the preschool class, you see a tremendous amount of growth through the seasons. And these are the moments when you actually see them get a little bit bigger all at once. When they came down off of the stage after they had performed the song in front of what I would call a huge crowd, um, each student just looked a little bit bigger to me and they, they seemed like they had grown just in that moment. Thank you, Steve. I'm Diane, the Director of Auxiliary Programs at Giddens. And something I, two things I really love about what Steve just shared is firstly, how care and concern for our community and truly being an interconnected community shows up at Giddens in so many different moments and ways from the littlest kids to the biggest kids to the grown-ups to the families you know having little three-year-olds be able to do perspective taking and think <clears throat> what might it feel like for people who are um who don't have a visitor and how can i hold them in that space and 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 welcome them into my community um and the second thing i love about that small moment is, you know, watching kids as they develop and grow is something that's really special that we get to do as educators. And it's something really special that as parents, I think, especially take putting your kid into an early childhood program, knowing that they're going to be growing tremendously in a short amount of time, and you're going to maybe even drop your kid off at school one day and then pick them up and see some moment that's happened for them that has changed them in some way is so beautiful and it's so lucky to be able to work in that environment. Thanks, thanks, bye. Thank you.
That's my, my cue. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Sarah, and I have a three-year-old in Steve's class. Very lucky to have Steve as our, our daughter's teacher. Um, and I met Steve, I think, during an orientation prior to my daughter enrolling. And I knew between making that connection and just the infrastructure and the facility that Giddens offered that it would be a good fit for me as a parent. And then you hope that the stars align and the magic happens and your kid feels that same kind of beautiful chemistry. Um, about my kind of small moment is about three weeks, maybe two or three weeks into the school year, Giddens hosted an online kind of big Zoom orientation for all the, I think it was for all families or maybe it was just new families. And because it was 6 p.m. and we were home, our daughter, ended up being involved in this orientation. So she was watching the Zoom and as were a couple other kids with parents. Um, and it was really interesting how I realized she lit up when she saw Karina, the Spanish teacher and Bryce, the PE teacher, of course, Steve, her own teacher. And I had this moment where I realized there are so many people taking care of my kid. It's, it is Steve, a hundred percent. It's Diane, it's the whole extended day team. And to walk into the facility and have Mary, one of the heads of school say, hi, Simone. I'm like, oh my God, you know, my kid's name. <laughs> like that just felt so powerful as a parent to know that all these life experiences and all these people from different walks of life are watching after my kiddo. And I think, especially after two years of living in a bubble to have these really positive influences from other people was was really cool and she was really parroting back like let me tell you about the zones of you know the, the zones the red zone is when you're feeling mad and the green zone and it was so cool to see her um talk about those things that she had learned and i think the other thing that i didn't really appreciate until having her enroll is also how awesome it is to have older kids around um and the buddy system and she talks about you know when her when older kids come to the classroom and I think as a parent of a young child, you sort of write that off. Like it's it's incidental that there's a K through five or a pre-K through five, but actually there's a lot of value there and having some of the older kids and, you know, just they're such little sponges. So what they absorb, but I mean, I can't say enough good things. There's wonderful communication, um, great handholding for new parents and my kid loves it. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. I like the bats. We do all the bats. Is it my turn? <laughs> it is. Hi, Samara. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Samara, and I am one of the pre-K teachers at Giddens. Um, I have been teaching, like Steve, at Giddens for a long time. So um, whenever we have the opportunity to share small moments, there are just so many moments that happen throughout the year and um, in my time in teaching. But this year in particular, as I was thinking about small moments, I was thinking about all that I have observed this year with my students in particular around making connections with their classmates and also with the larger community. And in part, I think that is because at the beginning of COVID we were so separate and um, in the Giddens community, things like um, spending time with older kids on the playground or spending time with your other pre-K class is a big important part of what um, we do at Giddens. So, you know, it was during the time when we couldn't gather, um, that was definitely missed. And this year is one of the years when we're really starting to gather a lot more, which I 
am feeling so happy about. So I've really noticed my students making connections and the importance of them connecting not only with their peers, but with peers in the larger community. And one of those moments happened during Buddies and a couple of um, people have already mentioned Buddies, but I'll give you a little overview of what that is. Our class, the younger grades partner with the older grades. And within that, they spend time together playing and doing activities. And also each student in the younger class is either partnered with a specific, with one student in the older class or maybe two. And so it's a really important time um, for them to make connections. And it's something that we value at Giddens. Um, but this year in particular, we, as we were prepping for our very first buddy meeting, and I was talking to my students about what buddies is and how they might, um, feel when they saw their buddy and I talked about how exciting it can be but also how they might be nervous meeting an older child for the first time and they all just sort of listened to me and you know um I think they they all were kind of had sort of blank stares because I don't think they really knew what it was but I was optimistic that it was going to be um a good time and so they came in and they met their buddies and um Everything seemed to be going well. They were uh, playing together and drawing together. Their first activity was drawing, uh, was listening to the story, it's not a box, and then doing some artwork. And at the end of our buddy time, I gathered them at the carpet um, to just kind of you know, reflect and review. I wanted to just touch base with all the kids and make sure that they had enjoyed their time. And one of my students ran up to me and said, I love my buddy. I really like my buddy. And I said, do you remember their name? And um, he said, no, but he has dreads like my grandfather. And in that moment, um, I just thought, it just brought home to me how important representation is um, and how important it is for the younger children to see reflections of themselves, their identity in the school, not only in their peers, but also in, um, in older students. And I, I think that that's really an important thing that we uh, think about at Giddens as we are not only preparing them, matching them with their buddies, but also creating uh, cohorts and classrooms is about um, making sure that students are able to connect with their peers, but also that there's representation there for them as they're developing their identity and sense of self. Thank you, Samara. Um, I'm just pausing for a moment because that was lovely. And I think it touches on um, not just one of our values, but more than one of our values, right? Giddens is uh, really committed to an active and engaged community, uh, which is that, that buddy program, but even beyond that, uh, equity and inclusion and uh, making sure that we have a diverse population that feels included and not just included, but honored and, and has a sense of belonging. So that shows up in the early childhood program, just like it does throughout uh, the school. So thank you so much for that small moment. Going up the dollhouse. Uh, I want to have two best friends. I like reading books with my friends. I like to play with them. That makes me feel welcome. I like playing with my friends outside. Good morning, everyone. Um, I think it's. I think I'm up. If I'm if I'm tracking correctly, <laughs> um, my name is China, and I am mom to a um, pre-K kiddo in Samara's class. And um, this is our first year at Giddens, and um, there are so many things I feel like I could share. I think to start, I just want to note um, that we came to Giddens. Uh, maybe in a less traditional path, I'm not really sure, but we 
um, were a part of um, a different sort of preschool program prior to exploring other options. And one of the reasons that we wanted to explore other options is because we would pick up our kiddo every day and ask how things were. Um, and his response was always that he didn't want to talk about it or uh, he didn't have anything to share. And at first I thought that that was maybe um, uh, based on age and some of it might have been, but um, in hindsight, um, I think it was much more than that. And sort of my um, small moments um, at Giddens have been that I'll pick my kid up and I can't get him to stop talking about the things that have happened throughout the day. Um, he's so excited to share about everything and in detail. Um, and it's interesting. I know that Samara knowing Noah, it might be hard to imagine him not wanting to open his mouth to share about things. Um, but that was our experience in a different place. And, and I just reflect on um, like the shared values that everyone at Giddens has with our family that I think creates a space for Noah to feel very um, supported and comfortable as if he were at home um, and learning. And I think that that has opened up a world where he's able to be himself and to be able to um, transition back to home and share. And um, I think that the thing that is most striking to me as a parent and, and Sarah touched on this a little bit, but just about how vulnerable it feels to be a parent and then send your kid off to a place to be. Um, and, but having done that at Giddens, I have just no worries about him while he's there. Um, I know that he is loved and um, sheltered and he is learning and in ways that I couldn't support at home. And, and that makes me feel like it's the best place to be. Um, um, really quickly, so my small moment, um, I will say, so I, we had a moment where Noah was sharing at dinner um, about his race um, and he didn't, it, it, he just was sort of sharing in the way of four-year-old shares. And um, Noah's a mixed race child um, and um, he had made a comment that was sort of indicative of our society as a whole that was really heartbreaking to me. And I wasn't sure what to do with it, but I emailed um, uh, teacher Samara, which is something that I, in other communities, I wouldn't think to do, but just to share that this had happened. And we felt just so supported and like um, that there was a place that he was gonna be eight hours of the day that are gonna um, uphold the values and the learning and the teaching that was is necessary to make him feel included and like a whole child. And that just um, is wonderful. Thank you so much, China. I have recess and Can we go back inside? Yep, those are my students. <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing those videos. Um my name is Tracy, and I'm a pre-K teacher here at Giddens. I've been here for three years. Two of those have been during COVID, so, um, and two of them were also um, as a preschool teacher. So this is my first year in pre-K at Giddens, and um, it's just an amazing experience to be with these humans whose brains are at a certain stage of development that's really different than my own. and. Um, helping to guide them through their school day and their help support them in their community is just really, really fun and fascinating. Um, as you have been talking, I've been, I, di I didn't mute myself at a certain point, and I apologize for that, but I've been taking notes because everything, I've heard so many incredible things and it's sort of like, I almost feel like it pulled me off course from my, 
my plan, but I think I can integrate everything into my plan for this little bit of time that I have. Um, <clears throat> for me, uh, on a daily basis, I try um, as a pre pre K teacher to have a, a time where we're all together as a community. We sit in a circle and, um, and we just give each other space. We call it body space. Everyone sits on their little dot and they, and I say first, <clears throat> okay, find your comfortable position, your most comfortable way to sit and check out your body space. Do you feel good? being next to the people that you're next to and then take a really deep breath or blow a big bubble. That's what we say. And we have a gazillion different ways to take deep breaths together, but we, we take a really deep breath. We blow a big bubble and then we let it all out. And sometimes we do that like seven times. And then we, when we're all kind of settled we have this chart that has a terrible name. It's called the, the zones of regulation chart, but it, it's really easy for the children to understand. It's got the color red for like feeling really aggravated or angry, yellow for maybe feeling nervous or unsure or also a little irritated. And then green, which is really, you know, calm, happy. I feel good in my space. And then blue, you could be tired or you could be sad or you could be feeling lonely or anything. So these colors, they associate with how they're feeling in that moment. And I've always been so impressed because in preschool and now in pre-K, they can do this for each other and for themselves where they pass the chart around. They slide it on the floor in front of them. They slide it to the next person and they identify how they're feeling in that moment. And we don't say anything other than just, you know, they touch the chart or they say how they're feeling. And sometimes on a really good day, we have a, a chime that we ring that, that shares how we're feeling. So like something like that could be, I'm in the, blue zone or I'm kind of in the blue zone and the green zone. So we pass it around. We give each other the time and the space to share how we're feeling with really no judgment at all. I don't comment on how they're feeling. And then we take another deep breath and we make a choice about what we're going to do next. So um, like all of the things that have been said in this, this little Zoom call, the uh, I think someone said, oh, as a parent, you're in a vulnerable, vulnerable position. Well, every day that these children come to their school community, they're also vulnerable. So we practice every day empathy and self-care. And, um, and hopefully through all of that, you know, social and emotional work, which we do a lot of, it sort of unlocks the door for their learning because they feel safe and they feel joyful. And, um, and that's, that's what I feel is the most important thing in the ECE, early childhood education, um, part of Giddens. I feel like there was one other thing. Oh, I know. Um, being in a school, which is like preschool through fifth grade, I think is also a really amazing opportunity because I've seen it in my students for these little little ones to see their future selves. So they see these older children doing things that they aspire to do. And I feel like that's modeled in such a, a fantastic way um, in our community. So that's all. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Tracy. I loved hearing the small moments from China and from Tracy. There are so many um, nuggets in those moments that connect to our values here. When I was listening to China's moment, my first thought was 
um, how her story was really illustrating our student-centered approach and how her child felt seen and heard and felt a sense of belonging and his curiosity and his needs um, of you know, developing a sense, a love of learning and an excitement for learning were being met. And that was being expressed in a form of sharing what he had learned and sharing about his day and sharing that excitement. Also thinking about the moment she shared of when he said something about his race that didn't quite sit right with her, how she engaged with Samara. There was that active and engaged community where Samara and China were uh, um, formed a partnership to problem solve and to come to, um, to communicate and to talk with each other and to um, come to some common understanding and to, and to problem solve. And when at Giddens, we always view parents as partners. We view them as you're, you're one of your experts, an expert on your child. And we always want to work together, together and collaborate to provide the best educational experience we can for them. When I was listening to Tracy's moment, the idea of developing the whole child and especially that social and emotional development came to mind. You can hear at a very young age, at three and four years old, we're already talking to them about the idea of what is going on in your body? What is What are the feelings and sensations in your body and how are those being expressed? And we articulate that through our zones of regulation. So our three and four year olds are learning about that and that is a foundation for their social and emotional development that carries them through their time at Giddens where they learn more about their zones of regulation and more about how they can learn about themselves as learners and to advocate for themselves and um, give them what they need or ask for what they need. Ken, we can't hear the video. In my voice. Can you hear it now? Yeah. Okay. I like to things at the I'm going to play it again. Sorry about that. Let me know if you can hear it. I like to do. you smiling Ken which gave us a clue that you could hear the video so. <laughs> I could hear the video sorry about that all the all the little things you have to click on a zoom call to get things to work um, well you all are here with us in community with us this morning and so we we absolutely want to set some time aside to be in conversation with you I'm going to stop sharing right now and I am going to invite us to open up a conversation. Uh, maybe you have a question for us. Maybe you're just reflecting on your own child as a learner and you want to be in conversation about those reflections. Um, we're happy to 
uh, set aside time now and I actually look forward to setting some, some aside some time right now to be in conversation with you. Um, you're welcome to just unmute and ask your question. If you'd prefer to do it through the chat, I'd be happy to um, be happy to just read the questions through the chat. Um, I, I am recording this event. I will share it out uh, later on. Um, we will also offer a Meet Our Community series in January, which is going to um, put really our entire community in front of you um, through smaller Zoom calls so that you can learn about all the different aspects of our program and, and meet all the different members of our community. So stay tuned for that opportunity. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, push out a communications uh, when I have that, uh, when I have those dates to share, but that will happen in January. Um, but now I'll just open it up to a conversation. Um, so feel free, like I said, to unmute and ask or, or put it in the chat. And as teachers, I should mention, we're really comfortable with silence. So we're happy to just sit and, and be in silence with you as well while you think about maybe a question you have. I can. Uh, this is Andy Zapata. My little square says Katie Miller, but I'm not. <laughs> um, I was wondering uh, what what type of um, how big are the class sizes for the pre-K or the whatever it is this is for Kent, for for I'm um, sorry for China and no Samara and uh, was it and Tracy and Steve yeah yeah Tracy yeah. and Steve thank you. Um, I'm happy to answer, but please uh, feel free. One of you, if you, anybody I else. I can answer the, the, in preschool, I think Steve has 15 right now. Is that right? Generally? 16. 14, 15, 16. I have 15 in my class. And Samara, you probably, how many do you have? I have 15. Yeah. I think 15 is uh, where we typically yeah, we have uh, cap it at 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you should also, I think the other thing that's important to note in that is that um, th the classroom community is uh, has a, a, a lead teacher and a support teacher, and then there are additionally um, specialist teachers, um, our music performance teacher and our Spanish teacher, our um, gym teacher, our, our spark teacher. Um, our school counselor. Um, so there's, uh, you know, a large team. And then, of course, um, all of our leaders on the instructional side, um, we're all uh, pushing in and involved. Uh, so it's a, a big team just supporting every child. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I was also curious, like what a typical day for, uh, for a student would be like. Samara, you want to tackle that one? I can answer that. Um, so for us in pre-K, we start the day at eight o'clock in the morning and children who arrive earlier than that are outside having some social time on our playground, our new ECE playground, which is really nice um, and also connected to our classroom. And then when they come in, um, we typically start the day off with what I call morning work, but it's just really a time for them to get grounded in the day and socialize a little bit with each other and also make begin to like make some choices for their day. So they're playing together at the tables or on the carpet. And then um, this year after that, they will have a time with specialist. And like Ken mentioned, um, the specialists that we have are Spanish, PE, music, um, and Spark. And so they'll during they'll have their specialist time. And then after that, we're on the playground. We have recess, which is really important for them to run around and move their bodies. And then we come in and have some snack. And um, in my class, we do after snack, we have a, a math block and they're just exploring all the great things about math, playing with math materials, um, lots of games and stories at the carpet. And then 
we uh, have another recess and then we come inside, we have lunch together, which is really fun. Um, they get to talk to one another and then we spend some time doing some literacy work or maybe working on some more of our spark. Um, and then they have choice time after that. And that's really the time when they are playing together and deciding what they want to do. There's a lot of, in my classroom, there's a lot of Lego building, um, block building, playing with the dollhouse as some of my students mentioned, um, and just interacting together. And then for the afternoon portion of the day, um, they do have a short rest time or quiet time. And, um, and then at the end of the day, we have an ending activity with the class. And then we always end by how we began by coming together at circle and um, talking about the highlights of our day. And then I sing goodbye to all of the children and then they're off to extended day, which is another part of their day uh, that some, some students attend. And that's when they get to hang out and play with um, students from the other classes and the extended day teachers and have lots of fun doing those things. So that's pretty much how the day goes. Oh, it sounds so, like so much fun. I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to add on to that, that families also um, do have a, a half day option um, and a partial week option. Those are really there to support families as they're trying to transition their children into a, a school-based program. And we know that some kids, um, you know, might need a, a smaller, pro, a shorter program in the beginning of the year, but um, we'll transition into a full day program at some point later in the year. And we just want to show up in those moments and, and just uh, support families with that, those different program transitions. Um, and then as Samara was mentioning, we do have a, a completely wrapped in extended day program, which provides families with a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, drop off and particularly around pickup, because all of our kids are just enrolled in extended day and, and families have the 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 freedom to just use that program as they as they want and and so we want to make sure families are are supported in that regard um i'm going to pivot to um sally i see you have your hand up if you wanted to ask your question hi yeah thanks thanks all for taking time on the saturday morning <laughs> to talk with us um I think I got a partial answer to my question um, from Samara, which was I was wondering about like the outdoor space and like um, what kids do outdoors. It sounds like there's a new ECE playground. That sounds really great. So just curious about that. Does someone wanna? I can speak to that. that. <laughs> uh, my classroom is is just I can see the playground from my classroom it's a my pre-k classroom and um we have two playgrounds actually we have um we call it the big playground which is lots and lots of room to run around to play different um games with balls and um we have jump ropes out there sometimes and draw with chalk and um Surprisingly enough, um, preschoolers love to sweep. So we sweep and we take care of the plants and I don't know, just do all kinds of things on that playground. And that is um, my class um, spends all of, we don't go to the ECE, the smaller playground during the day. They only go there for extended day. So um, there's a great big slide out there as well. Um, and the ECE playground is, is um, can be entered through Samara's classroom or Steve's classroom. They have doors that open onto that playground. And it's, it's, a, it's a smaller version of the big playground. And it has the slide and all sorts of things that they can do imaginative play with and, and move their bodies around in. So. Cool, thank you. Is it Carolina? I think you had your yeah. hand raised. Hi. Uh, yes, it's Carolina. Um, my question is more about stamina and what to expect for a three-year-old. And uh, well, my son right now is two years old and four months, and he still needs a lot of sleep in the afternoon. And I'm trying to figure out, like, for September next year, 
if it's normal the kids drop in their nap or what about rest during the afternoon and in general what is the typical experience around that age i can answer that one um uh we do have a rest time in the afternoon and uh in the preschool classroom it starts around i have a story time and then a transition to rest time um and really it's built so that some kids do take a nap and some do not. Um, so the ones who go to sleep can sleep as long as they need to. There are kids who sometimes will take uh, a nap for 45 minutes or an hour, but some students um, can take a nap for longer than that. And then um, at a point you have to, the ones who aren't going to sleep, you can offer them books and things to do on their beds. And then at a point you, you invite them to get up and we call that choice time, quiet choices. And usually we start them at the tables with things like Play-Doh and painting. And the idea is that um, the kids who are still sleeping can continue to sleep and can wake up in a natural way. Um, um, and then it's actually a really, lovely time in the classroom, as you might imagine, if let's say half of the class is asleep and half of the class is awake, um, you can really, um, you can do small group work with them or really um, the, the story writing that I referenced in my, in my small moment, um, you can really um, write stories with that, with that group of kids who, who are up and awake. And um, they also learn to, um, to use quiet voices at quiet choices and, and to be mindful of the people around them who might be sleeping. Thank you, Steve. Um, Adam, I saw that you had your hand raised. Did you have a question? Yeah, thank you. Um, also, appreciation for all of you spending your Saturday morning at Zoom work. Um, I liked hearing about the the collaboration that you do between the very young children and the fourth, fifth grade age. I also want to ask, as you're settling into the building, um, how you are or how you're looking forward to taking advantage of your proximity with Lake Washington and what ideas you have coming up for involving the very young kids with even older kids there, if any. Who wants to take that? I'll, I'll say a little bit and then and then pass it on. I'm really excited. Um, COVID was a little bit of a pause and we were more in pods and there wasn't as much opportunity um, to um, develop the relationships with sort of the larger community. But the, um, the LDUB students, this is the middle school that uh, shares our building. Um, each time the preschoolers are walking through, they all just wave to them and smile. And um, there's great opportunities to work with them. I'm hopeful that we can, um, uh, we, there are some shared spaces such as the library and the commons. And I'm hoping that um, we can uh, have the older, the, the middle school students read books with our younger students. And again, story writing is another possibility. I think they can take, uh, younger kids stories down in dictation. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. And then beyond that, we're developing relationships around the, the neighborhood. Um, there's an organization called Lighthouse uh, for the Blind and the fifth graders went there and then they came into our classrooms and uh, shared with small groups of, of ECE students um, what they had learned there. And they shared their, um, their braille alphabets with the younger kids and so, um, we're really looking forward to um, developing relationships in, within the community um, beyond the walls of our building as well. And I just wanted to add to that, um, uh, being a parent of uh, two, two daughters who have gone to LDUB, there's always been, at least in my mind, a very strong connection with the students from there because during the time when we were in the shared building um, at our first year, my daughters were also attending LDEB. So they would walk over and bring all their friends over to my classroom and oogle over the cute kids <laughs> and things like that. And so um, 
in the time, like Steve mentioned, when we were in COVID, we were kind of more closed off, but that did not change the curiosity of the pre-K students, especially when they see the older girls walking around. And so last year, my class was very curious about the middle school students and would often like run over in the middle of their um, their outdoor learning time and just wave at them and like do all these things to sort of distract them. And I had to talk to them. I was like, you know, they're learning too. They're our neighbors. We have to be uh, kind to our neighbors. And they were like, well, we're so curious. And I said, well, here's what we can do. We can write them letters. So we had started writing letters to the science teacher over at LDUB and we would receive letters back. And so like Steve, I'm really hopeful that we, as we start to gather more, um, that they will come over. I know they're very excited about that because we all last year received all these letters from the students. And even um, in passing, when we're on the playground and they come out just to you know run around or have a break, they're always like interacting with our students and giving them sometimes pushes on the swings or making space for them on the courtyard. So um, yeah, it's really great to have an older, uh, an older uh, school so close by. Thank you, that's really exciting. If I can slip in one other question, if people feel like they've answered that one. Um, I'm wondering if you can focus a little bit more about dramatic play and sort of the progression from dramatic play into theater and older grades in, in as much as that exists. Um, I have a little guy who very much loves dramatic play and uh, would love to hear how the teachers facilitate that and encourage that. I can I can talk about that a little bit. Um... It is hilarious, first of all, and so great. We read books together, and there are a couple of books that we really, really love and stories that we love. And they basically, like I've told them so many times, and they've heard them so many times that they know them. So they start to act out the story. Most recently, it's been Caps for Sale, which is a really well known book, picture book. And um, they always, like, I can start, I can read the book. I'm like the narrator of the book. And then they act out all the different parts. So it's as if they're putting on a performance in the classroom. Um, and they do it really cooperatively. And, um, and they have so much fun doing it. Another one that we do is we, we make kind of like a little wooden, like bridge in the middle of our rug out of blocks and then um, we act out the, the story of the Billy Goat's Gruff. And they all want to be the troll <laughs> or the biggest goat or the baby goat. Um, doesn't matter. But they, lo they love collaborating and acting those things out. And I think that partially because we've done a lot of that, they feel pretty comfortable getting up and doing things in front of the school. Plus, we have just an amazing uh, music teacher and um, theater arts teacher at Giddens. Um, so I think they're pretty fearless about it. Thanks, Tracy. I just looked at the time. Sadly, we're out of time. Um, there was a couple of things in the chat I just want to respond to quickly. Uh, we use cots, not mats, for um, for nap time in ECE, and I just want to confirm, yes, we have one preschool classroom and two pre-K classrooms um, in our program. Thank you very much for being here. If you have not visited Giddens School in person yet, um, I would encourage you to sign up for a tour through Ravenna or you can reach out to me directly. Uh, we would love to uh, meet you in person, bring you through the school and, and have you experience the classrooms. Um, again, we are very appreciative of your interest in our community and thankful that you spent some time with us. So have a wonderful rest of your day and just looking forward, I hope I, I'm wishing you all a great uh, Thanksgiving holiday as well. Take care. Thank you, teachers and parents. Thank you.